Morning guys. So, lovely night at the campsite. I was in bed by 10, because I was absolutely shattered. It's been raining all night and I think it's going to be a wet all day today. So I think the plan today is we're going to go up to Ribblehead Viaduct. Famous from the Harry Potter scene with the Ford Anglia flying all over it. He's getting sorted. He's not staying tonight. He's uh, heading back home later on because he's got to go and pick his work van up. As you can see, the awning didn't make it through the night. That kind of flapped everywhere. But yeah, so basically we're going to get sorted now. We need to get off this campsite by about 11 and it's about half 10 now. And head up to Ribblehead Viaduct. So, stay tuned and we will head up to Ribblehead Viaduct with a noisy dog. Right, awesome, let's go. Well guys, we're here, we're at Ribblehead Viaduct, and as you can see, I have a slight problem. My wipers, they're kind of not working. I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to try and fix them somehow. They just seem to be jamming. Not good, because it's bloody wet outside. Anyway, there is Ribblehead Viaduct. You can see, three of my crappy wipers. So let's go and check it out. And I'll sort my wipers out after. Hopefully they'll be a bit drier later. And I might not need them. Right, let's go over to the viaducts. As you can see, it's actually getting quite busy. Now, normally, I'll try and give you a bit of history on the viaduct. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of signal here. I'll just play my lens a minute. So I can't really find anything out about it. Other than, as you know, it featured in that famous Harry Potter scene with the Hogwarts Express going over it. If we're lucky, we might see a steam train going over it. One thing I can tell you is, when you look at it, it is a massive feat of engineering, isn't it? That is like, when you consider the landscape it's built into, how barren it is. It's a pretty epic feat of engineering, that. Those good old Victorians again. Marvellous. There you go. A little bit of history on it for you. So basically, looking at that board there, down here they had a, a rail inspection pit. I think it was around about there and then uh, some brickworks which created all the red brick that you see at the top up there uh, about there just above the stone <sighs> weather's a bit dismal again yeah it created all the red brick you see just above the arches well creating the arches even and the red brick for the tunnel that line the tunnel so there must be a tunnel over that way somewhere um, but yeah, pretty cool. And up on the top of the hill up there was the uh, workers' village called Sebastopol, named after the Crimean War. So there you go, a little bit of history for you. It's pretty damn epic, isn't it? I'll tell you what would be nice, camping over there for the night. But I don't know if you'd be able to get over to it. Who knows? So here we've got a modern workman and an ancient workman. That tells you the difference, doesn't it? Look at that. Hard hat, headphones, jackhammer, graft, cloth cap, pipe. Have you noticed how the um, the Victorian worker actually looks a bit stockier and a bit bigger build than that one? There's actually a train coming over. If you can see there. 
Looks like some kind of goods train. And there's a date stone as well at the top, 1875. That's a big train, that, isn't it? That's dragging a fair few carry. I mean, look at it. The end of the train is just at the end of the viaduct now, and the front of it's there. So that train is the full length of the viaduct. That's a bloody big train, isn't it? So that train spans the full length of the viaduct. Wow. Awesome. You know, built in 1875, but finished, restored, 1988-91. And beware of falling masonry. So apparently the stone used can flake off, so bits of stone can fall down and hit you. So you've got to be careful when walking underneath it. Yeah. Let's not get too close then, eh? So if you look, it looks like all the arches are numbered. 15, 16, 17, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, so 24 arches in total. It's quite a big wide up to it. If you look there, there's a piece of stone that's fallen out. That's not a small piece either, is it? That looks like a pretty damn big piece. I'm assuming it's fallen out anyway. You'd know about it if that fell on you, wouldn't you? Damn. I wonder if anyone's ever actually been killed by falling masonry. Who knows? Anyway, let's crack on up that way and see what we can see at the top. Some little brick structure there with a little chimney on it. It's like it's all Shame you can't get over and check it out. There's a nice little tunnel there as well that they built. Miniature tunnel. Wherever it leads to. I'm guessing this must have been like some kind of car track or cart track. It's too wide just to be a foot tunnel. See, every detail was thought about it, wasn't it? You know what I mean? It's like they just thought of everything. Like they'll put a little top layer for the road and all that. Amazing. Like the uh, local banks have been having to do at the uh, train. Just to be fair, actually, it's pretty cool. Actually, quite like them. That's quite cool. It's hot and the cold. What do you reckon? Strange one Yeah, the design's pretty funky, aren't they? And there's. The railway station it's in the middle of nowhere. That's pretty cool, isn't it? United Peoples. So there's Bleemore signal box. I'm assuming that's supposed to be like a derivative of Bleakmore, like a local way of saying it. Imagine living there though. Somebody does live there because uh, satellite boxes and everything on the uh, wall. So I won't have any trouble with your neighbours, would you? Actually, looks like the house is abandoned. Actually, it 
Looks like there was other structures here as well that had been knocked down. There's a little stone footbridge. Is it safe? Well, it's been here for hundreds of years, so I assume it is. So, down there, that looks like the tunnel they're on about. Well, it's not the Hogwarts Express, but where it comes out, I've no idea. Well, it wasn't quite the Hogwarts Express, but we have managed to catch a train going over the viaduct. But, hey, there you go, it's better than nothing, isn't it? It's pretty good. <laughs> So, Ribble Valley, very nice. Nice walk, some nice, nice views. It's been nice, I've enjoyed it. He's um, heading home today. And I might go on somewhere else, depending on the weather, because my wipers have packed up. I don't know what to do. But if it stays dry, then I'll carry on and go somewhere else. Otherwise, no idea. Might have to head home myself. But, either way, it's been fun. <laughs> so, there you go guys. Ribblehead Viaduct. Always wanted to see it, glad I have. It's been good. Nice, quiet walk. Not too bad, not too heavy after yesterday's walk. But it is, it's a beautiful place. It's peaceful, tranquil. Uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Right, I'm going to head back to the van now and grab a cup of coffee, I think. Awesome. Yeah, back at the van now. Time for a well-earned cup of coffee. Don't actually feel like you walk that far, but it is actually quite far. Must be a massive road going all the way up the hill over there as well. A load of bikers coming past. Yeah, that one going down the hill, that's quite cool that one, I like that one. Nice. I don't mind a bike, but I'd probably end up killing myself. Yeah. Anyway. Ribblehead. Alright, we're on the road again. And as you can see, my wife is a... Uh, well, they were working intermittently, but now they're not. Absolute nightmare. Anyway. Fingers crossed it won't rain hard on the way there. We shall see. See, it's sort of like, it does kind of work, but really slow. And then stops. Yeah, not very good. I don't know. Anyway, let's see what happens. So I'm just parked up in Settle. I'm going to go for a little walk in Settle, but check this out. You can just see that. That's a tight squeeze there, isn't it? Bloody hell. I bet when he drove up that hill, he might expect it to go through a gap that small, would he? Anyway, I'm going to go for a water and settle. Hopefully, I'm not in a residence only parking area. I don't think I am. So, should be fine parked here. As you can see, it's quite a tight street. It's nice when you wander around little villages and find weird little things like 
Elephants made out of plant pots. Strange. Nice little village actually. Have a quick wander around and then try and decide where to go tonight. You don't know yet. And anyway, we'll have a wander. So this is the Masonic Hall. Nice building. Look at that. Meet on all before the full moon, except July and August. Why the full moon? A bit weird. Nice village though. Check out that. So that's the folly. Which looks like some kind of old inn or something. Nice. The museum. Up there's where we're parked, where that car's going. Let's take a wander up here. So if that's the gatehouse. Gatehouse to what though? That's nice, isn't it? So just across there, you've got Ye Old Naked Man Cafe. If that's what you'll find inside or not. So there's another little back alley down here. I love all these little back alleys. Antiques, vintage and collectibles. There you go, Settle Village. I think that's pretty much all there is to see. Unless you want your hair cut in. Hair uh, uh, salon. Licensed dealer of tea and coffee. Do you know it's been licensed to deal in tea and coffee? So that's anchoring back to the old days, maybe. Anyway, back to the van. And I'm going to find somewhere to park and decide where to go tonight. Whether to go to Malham. So it might be Malham Cove again. Or somewhere else. Inglebrook, waterfall. Maybe up there. Let's go. This always gets me curious. Looking us like this. Probably shouldn't be coming down here. I'm curious. There's nothing on it saying don't come down. See? Gotta love things like that. Awesome, isn't it? Just bring out little nooks. I like it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone down there. Anyway, like I said, I'm gonna head back to the van. So, this was just a little quick tour of Settle for you. There's a lot more to see here. Pay it a visit, come and have a look. Uh, but right now, I'm gonna head back to the van and decide where to go next my little whistle stop tour of the Peak District, the Dales, Yorkshire Dales. It's not the Peak District, is it? It's the Dales. You know what I mean, possibly. Anyway, let's go. Right, so I said I was going to go to Ingleton Falls, didn't I? Anyway, um, part of the side of this lovely bit of hillside, so Ingleton Falls is basically over the other side of there. I did drive down, went into the car park, read the notice board and it said it's a four mile walk. Like a circular walk around to it. With all the walking I've done recently, I thought I'm not doing a four mile walk. I'm not in the mood for it. Anyway, I looked on the map 
And basically, if you drive around from Ingleton Falls and park where I have there, walk down this path, along the ridge there, down, you come to Thornley Falls, I think it is. So there should be another waterfall over there, Thornbrook, I think it might be. So I'm going to go and check that out instead. And it's actually on the Ingleton Falls Trail. But uh, it's a pretty epic spot, isn't it, to park? Awesome. Anyway, let's go and check out this waterfall and see if it's any good. Who knows? See, now I was just thinking to myself, if I had a four-wheel drive, I'd drive down here and park up, but check it out. Looks like it gets quite full. Hence the reason why there's a bridge to cross. Because the ford gets quite deep by the look of it. It's got all these little gates as well, isn't it? I don't know what them are for. Unless it's to stop debris going down or something. I have to go over this uh, lovely wooden bridge. Check that out guys, there you go, that is Ingleton Falls apparently, so it's Thornton Beck Falls but it's actually part of the Ingleton Falls Trail, so when I was down at the Falls car park and I said oh we can see the falls, there's the falls, I brought you anywhere. So apparently from reading up the board over there, Turner actually did a famous painting over it in about 1816 made it even more famous among the Victorians and they all started flocking and people have been flocking here ever since it is pretty impressive though isn't it beautiful yeah definitely worth the trip very very nice it's actually well set out as well and the steps going back up there, pretty steep. So you've got to be careful when you come here, make sure you, uh, make sure you wear proper footwear and that you're quite good and agile. Otherwise you might struggle. But there is Ingleton Falls, or as it's called, Thornton Force. I don't know why it's called Thornton Force, couldn't tell you but there you go there's a tinier one there as well awesome isn't it right I'm happy I've seen it now so I'll show you the path back to the van because it's actually oh see over there big bird in the uh, trees looks like I don't know if you saw that there I think there's a big heron just come out of the trees over there anyway yeah we're gonna head back to the van there's actually some pretty epic views on the way back to the van as well so I'll show you some of them there you go Thornton Falls and this is the climb back up to the top so apparently there's a one-way system in place for the Corbin. So as you can see, the steps are pretty steep. And you don't want to slip on them. It's not too bad with it being dry, but I can imagine when it's wet, this could actually be quite treacherous. It goes all the way up. So as I said before, it's a four mile walk, I believe, if you do the full circular route back to the Ingleton car park. 
which I'm not because I'm parked over there. First thing that strikes you here is all the danger signs. It's like they can't make it more apparent. Probably lost a glove. Yeah. See, it looks quite calm there, but obviously it's a 14 metre drop. If you slip in there and go down there, you've got no chance. At best, you might end up with a broken back. Worst. Beautiful though. See what I mean about treacherous? Not the best footpath, is it? Not sure what's round the corner, but I don't think you can get round, so I'm not going to chance it because my might look, I'll slip on my arse and go in the water. This is a nice quiet little spot. Clean. Down there is where the other side of the fall is. Nice. Quite tranquil. On a warm day, you can imagine bathing in that, couldn't you? On a warm day, not today. Tell you what, this bridge is a bit crooked, isn't it? I think whoever built that was having a drunk day, weren't they? Hopefully that one's a bit straighter. Yep, yeah, that one looks a little bit straighter than the other one, thank God. And just across there, you can see the pain. Not too far to go back. Bad though, is it? The only bad thing now is it started raining again, the wipers are still a bit cat. Oh well, see what happens, won't we? There you go guys, that was Ingleton Falls, my ankles are killing now with all these steps, anyway, I'll see you guys back at the van, Whew. getting fitter, hopefully losing a bit of the fatter, anyway, see you back at Thatch. Alright, we're back at the van, finally. Nice walk, we're tired. I'm going to do two things now. Take my bloody boots off and make a cup of coffee. And then when I've done that, I'll decide where to uh, park up for the evening. I'm actually going to move on to that flat bit a minute first. <sighs> right, let's get a cup of coffee. Well earned. Right, I've had a cup of coffee in the pot noodle, so I was a bit hungry. Now when I think about it, and I've decided, I did actually debate about staying here actually, to be fair, but 
I've decided to head in that direction and go and park up at Ribblehead Viaduct. See what it's like over there. See if it's busy or not. We'll see what it's like over there. So we'll head back to Ribblehead and uh, maybe park there for the evening. Failing that, I could go back to that campsite. I'm two minds at the moment. Ribblehead or the campsite. But for now, I'll head back to Ribblehead while it's dry and not raining. Right, let's go. Oh, there's Riverland again. Now, I was going to park it, but it's a little bit busy. There's about five or six camper vans down there. There's a shed load of camper vans in the pub car park. So, and also, I've got no phone signal. So I could go to the station, park there. But as I said, it is a bit busy. And I don't really like busy. But I've just passed a couple of spots up here. So I think I'm going to head up here. The nice spot just on the top of this hill. See his mother camp from there. It's Friday night, isn't it? There's actually. See, so you actually get a great shot of the viaduct from this side. There's actually a lay by at the top here. Although I still don't get any phone signal here. However, it is quieter. So there's this one here. Which is potential or further down there is another one which is tucked away so I haven't decided yet either here or over there not quite sure I will decide good morning everybody this was my little campsite for the night beautiful isn't it just over that hill there is Ribblehead Viaduct. Now when I came here last night it was absolutely empty as anything. It's about nine o'clock in the morning now, if you look. It's rammed. Look at all the walkers over there. Loads of them. Mental. I didn't realise how busy it was, didn't you? Wow. I've seen loads of people turning around in front of me here. Now, now I know why. This guy turned up about half five this morning. Um, but other than that, it was quiet all night. And he was quiet, he just like got out of his van and disappeared. And I dozed off back to sleep again. Like I say, it's about half nine now, so I think just over, I'll walk over the crest of that hill now. I'll, uh, I'll show you, should be see Ribblehead Viaduct. Why did I not park over there? Well, when I went over there, it was busy. There was, like I said, there was about 10 camper vans in the pub car park and there was about six or seven on the road and I could see more turning up I just thought, no, I want somewhere quiet Plus which, there's no phone signal over there but for some reason, when you get here there's a phone signal, which is a bit weird and I thought, just in case of emergencies I want my phone to be in signal I've got kids and them, you've got to think stuff like that, haven't you? So, part two I'm glad I did actually, it's a nice spot and I would definitely park here again I just can't believe how many walkers there are over that hill there. And they must have come all the way around over. So they must have set off God knows what time. Anyway, there you go. So what's my plan today? Um, I'm going to pick the kids up after. But I want to see that Blue Lagoon thing still. So I'm going to have some breakfast and then we're going to head over to the uh, Blue Lagoon. But right now, let's have a see if we can see Ribblehead over that hill. Yeah, I was right. So there's Ribblehead. Looks like close there. And there's the van. And there's Ribblehead. So like I said, not actually that far from Ribblehead. And as you can see, there's just people everywhere. Just look how many people there are on the crest of that hill over there. Loads of them, proper busy place, but it is Saturday and this weather's supposed to be quite nice today, I think, so very, very busy. Anyway, I'm going to go back to my van and get my breakfast. I do feel like I'm a bit of a twat walking around with this. So, yeah, back to the van. Now there is a kid who's not enjoying his walk with his dad. All the way up, I just heard the dad going, Come on, we need to move quicker. Come on. Well, hang on a minute, Bellend. You've got bigger legs than him. Why don't you slow down for him? 
I don't know, some folk. The kid does not look happy. Yeah, busy, busy, busy. There's actually some kind of feature there as well. I'm not sure what it is. It's like some kind of rock feature. Maybe some kind of kiln or something. I'm not sure. I may take a wander and have a look. I may show you. I may not. Right now, wash my spoon. And I've got my uh, overnight oats. No, they're not really. They're um, granola. Maple and pecan granola. Aldi's best. Right, all packed up more or less. Breakfast had. Sun's breaking through the clouds. Nice and blue over there. So let's head to the Blue Lagoon. I can think of what we're thinking of then. Over that way, we'll see Riverled. Head to the Blue Lagoon. Beautiful spot though, isn't it? And as I said, it's just getting constantly more and more busy. But it is a great spot for a park up. Anyway, let's go. As you can see, it's just as busy down here. Lots and lots of walkers all over the road. Yeah. Oh my god, look how busy it is, guys. Absolutely rammed. Tell you what, I'm glad I parked where I parked yesterday, last night. And not where I parked yesterday. Yeah. Right. We're as far as we can go on the road. Ribblesdale is absolutely rammed. Um, I think there must be some kind of trek going on or something. Because there was loads of runners on the road. And the field over there is absolutely rammed with cars. So apparently, the uh, quarry is on the other side of that hill, the Blue Lagoon. But I don't know if I'm allowed to go through or not. I can't drive through, because it's quarry access. It says no public vehicular right of way. Doesn't say no public pedestrian. Oh, actually, yeah, trespassers will be prosecuted. So basically, this is as far as I can go. I can't get to it. That's a bummer. Trespassers will be prosecuted. So I can't go to the quarry. So this is as far as I can go. When red light shows where it is. Basically the quarry I think is just over there. Yeah. I don't want to risk being prosecuted so I'm not going to go through. So it belongs to Hanson Aggregates. So I'll just have to drop you some Google images of it. That's a shame actually. But I suppose they have to do it to stop people from going near it because it is quite dangerous. Well, it's extremely dangerous, actually. There's a bit of a pond over there. Not quite what I was looking for, though. So, I'm gonna end it here anyway, and say thank you for watching. Like I said, I'll drop you some um, footage of the Quarry Lagoon. But yes, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Stay safe out there. If I can get over to the quarry, I will. But I don't think I will. So, anyway, thanks for watching. See you later. Adioshki. So as you can see, train station. Across the lines. Hope you don't get your foot stuck. And then, beautiful station over there but if we walk across this field we might be able to get to the lagoon see I said I was finishing but I'm not because you can cut across here 
and you should be able to get to it, I think. I'm not sure. But this is basically Horton in Ribblesdale, which is where me and Saki stayed at the campsite the other night. So if I'm not mistaken, it should be across there. So this is a public footpath, or bridleway, whatever you want to call them. So we walk up here, and then cut across along the stone wall. Basically where them trees are, should be the lagoon. Fingers crossed. I'm not sure. There might be a fence to it. Well, basically, we'll be on the opposite side of it. But there, it's a beautiful village of Horton and Ribblesdale. So you've got a big car park there on the field. And I think the campsite we was at is somewhere across there. Incidentally, the food in that pub was absolutely amazing. Uh, well, there's a big farm across there. And there, oh, look. There you go, guys. Blue Lagoon. Fenced off, so you can't see it, but it's cool. Let's see if we can get closer. Right, I don't know how close I'm going to get to this. I'll get as close as I can. Bear in mind, there's a farm over there. I don't want the farmer, like, having a go at me. Traipsing across his field. Not that I'm doing any harm or anything. There is clearly been a path here of where people have walked before. I'm not going to cross the fence because that'd just be stupid, wouldn't it? But I can get some shots of it. Awesome. Just a shame I didn't bring my drone with me. Otherwise, I could have put the drone up and got a nice shot. But never mind. Anyway, let's see what we can see. And then I really will be ending the video. There's a sign there that says no swimming. Why would you? If you know the dangers, you know that they're just not the salt of water you want to swim in. It's really it's bad for your skin. It's basically it just eats your skin. It does look very beautiful. But also very deadly look at that though awesome yeah definitely would not be swimming in there that would just be a stupid move and there you go the blue lagoon that's about as good as i'm going to get to seeing it Looks like there's a new fence there. That's probably the best vantage spot there. So it kind of reminds you of like the Caribbean or something like that. Only it's deadly. But yeah. Ah, actually, there's a duck on it. How does the duck survive? If it's bad for our skin, how does the duck manage? Obviously, nature doesn't see the danger as we do. And just in case you thought I was making it up. So, there you go, guys. The Blue Lagoon. Right. I'll show you the lagoon. So I really am going to end it here and say thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I wanted to see it. I'm glad I've seen it. Something else to take off the list, isn't it? Awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Stay safe out there. Don't go swimming in blue lagoons. Adioskis. <laughs>